Welcome to Talk World Radio, a half-hour discussion of politics as if the people mattered. I'm David Swanson. This week on Talk World Radio, we are talking about counter-recruitment or discouraging people from joining a military. And we have two guests. Deborah Sweet is director of World Can't Wait and has been working to stop U.S. wars on the world for almost 60 years. And hip-hop activist and educator Miles Megasife is a veteran of the U.S. Marine Corps and an advocate for peace. And they have both been working on a project called We Are Not Your Soldiers. Uh, Deborah Sweet and Miles Megasife, welcome to Talk World Radio. Hi, David. Great to be here. Thank you, David. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming on and thanks for what you're doing. Uh, Deborah, do you want to start? What is We Are Not Your Soldiers? Well, you know, um, World Can't Wait started to drive out the Bush-Cheney regime in the wake of the totally illegitimate, immoral, and unjust invasion of Iraq. And in that process, we began to meet lots of U.S. veterans coming home from that who were really angry, justifiably so, about the situation they were forced to participate in. And after Obama was elected in the fall of 2008, we had a big meeting and we were talking about, okay, how do we go forward? A lot of activists thought, Obama, he's going to stop the war like that. Now what do we do? Our view was um, I think a lot more realistic that the U.S. as a whole was committed at that point to the so-called global war on terror. And we found the veterans to be hugely informative and a great resource. And we decided to organize it so that veterans with real life experience of immediate experience of these wars could start going into classrooms because the U.S., as people remember, was preparing for another surge in Afghanistan by Obama a couple of years later, and they really needed fresh troops. Yeah. So that's how we came up with WeAreNotYourSoldiers.org. And Miles, you've been one of the veterans doing that? I've been with We Are Not Your Soldiers for, I'd say, about five years now, five years, Um and it's uh, it's incredible. It's a great way to it's a very cathartic process. It's a great way to um, continue to heal myself by sharing my truth with potential enlistees, um, young people who aren't always shown the truth or shared. You know, the truth isn't shared with them by their recruiters or elders who might have been in the military. Um, I get a chance to go in and just be very authentic and my very kind of raw self and um, share through my music and let the students know about the realities that they might be facing. I'm told that army stands for a recruiter misled you. Uh, what do the, what do the recruiters tell them that's different from what you tell them? Well, <clears throat> I was wowed by my recruiter and um he 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 only shared the good points he only shared the the best points and brushed glosses over or brushes over with a nice paint stroke the uh the tra the things that'll be traumatizing to you um my recruiter didn't tell me that from day one in boot camp they were going to be yelling and screaming at me as if i was less than human um from morning until night my drill instructor didn't tell me that they were going to emasculate me in boot camp by talking about my mother and my aunt and my sister in sexual ways, you know, um, kind of violating your, your own sense of security or your sense of what home is waiting for you, you know, um, taking any, any sense of peace away. Your recruiter doesn't tell you that that the, the majority of your trauma will begin in boot camp. They don't tell you that. Um, and then if you're if you're fortunate enough to see combat, 
and you get a chance to act out any of the aggression that they've instilled in you, you'll be stuck with a life full of guilt. They don't tell you that. So, yeah, yeah, those are some of the things that they don't tell us. Deborah, do you think that young people are are being moved by learning about what the horrific personal experience is of being in the military and or do you think they're being moved by the politics of the wars that they never win and that everyone finds out are based on lies and so forth i mean what is because something's working right recruitment is down yeah a lot of things are hitting people reality hits and i think reality if we can convey it to young people or anyone is so basically important. But the other part that we really try to bring out and Miles is hitting on this is the morality. We're not a counter recruiting program that says, oh, well, here's some better alternatives. You know, here's how you can get a job. We go in in everyone's different way and, and say, look, if you participate with the US military, you really run the danger of losing your own humanity as well as what you were inflicting on the rest of the world. And I'm looking right now, I, we follow what the US military is saying about their recruitment problems. And I have to tell you, there was an interview I found hilarious with NPR last month with the Pentagon spokesperson. And um, the NPR host said, well, why is it that you're finding young people don't want to sign up? And the Pentagon spokesperson said, well, they're saying they're worried about getting killed or harmed or putting their life aside. And of course, we tell them, look, we don't do that kind of thing anymore. We have other militaries fighting our weapons, our battles. We're just going in there to advise, which was on the face of it, a complete lie. And I think that a lot of people see through that. I'm hoping so. And the more we can amplify this message that the US has no legitimate, morally just reason to be in 800 plus bases around the world. And I really thank World Beyond War, your organization, David, for putting that map up with all the bases. We use that all the time. And it's very important for people to understand what's materially being done in their name around the world that is completely against the interests of humanity. Well, that's very good to hear. Uh, people should go to worldbeyondwar.org and check out the, the tool for looking at bases around the world. Um, Miles, it seems to me that with the Afghanistan war and the Iraq war, there was a burst of support at first that included a burst of signups of recruiting. And about a year and a half in, it went way down and the public was saying never should have started these stupid wars, what we'd been saying from day one, right? Uh, was there, was, has there been a similar pattern with Ukraine? Did people start joining up because of Ukraine, even though it's the Ukrainians fighting? And, and is it now wearing off after, after the traditional year and a half? Um, what, what's happening? I I think people are beginning, like Deborah said, people are beginning to see through the veil more and more. So um, it's it's really Ukraine is just the next the next one to keep the cycle going of proxy wars and and um, you know there's always like this existential threat that we have to be aware of, and there's always these these bad guys, right? Um, if it's not Putin this year, it might be the leader of North Korea in two years or whatever the case is, there's always some, some far away threat that we all have to rally around. And so everybody put up Ukrainian flags and everybody shows support for Ukraine. But meanwhile, there are, there are hoods or there are neighborhoods and communities in this country that need so much help that see on the news how billions of dollars are being authorized with no problem to support a war in Ukraine, but people need 
people need clean water in Jackson, Mississippi. You know, people need people need health care. And um, I think uh, I think people are tired of it. You know, young people are tired of it. Young people are waking up. I go out my my, you know, my Silver Fox self. I go out to the hip hop clubs often and I perform and um, there's there's consciousness coming back into into hip hop, into the independent hip hop scene. People are rapping about, you know, spirituality and peace and being in touch with themselves and being in touch with the planet. So there's a shift happening, most definitely. I wonder if I could ask Miles if you could get ready to maybe give us a short a cappella uh, sample of of one of your performances. Uh, while I ask Deborah a question, uh, I, I I wonder what you think is is going to happen with Ukraine in terms of recruitment because uh, it's looking more and more like U.S. troops will be involved, like the army should have the poster, you know, join now, we're running out of Ukrainians, you know, and how- Yeah, how I mean, there, clearly the U.S. is um, intent on defeating Russia if it takes every last Ukrainian. And every single thing Ukraine has asked for up until this point, Biden has said, oh yeah, no, we're not gonna do that. And then they do it up to the F-16s really the last red line here is nuclear weapons. And there's no military personnel solution to that. Those weapons are decisive, taking things to a whole new level. And I think it's incumbent upon all of us to be saying whether it's Ukraine, Russia, or China, the fact that the U.S. and Biden in particular will not back off from first use of nuclear weapons is totally outrageous. The only country that's ever used them still holds them as a threat over every other person in the world. And I hope people are thinking about this. I just read this morning that popular support for more funds to Ukraine has now switched to, according to um, CNN, a majority in the U.S. opposing more money for Ukraine. Right on. Money meaning weapons, of course. We're speaking with uh -huh. Deborah Sweet and with Miles Megasife. Uh, Miles, maybe you can give us a sample of your artistic contribution to this effort. Okay, this is um, the second verse of my song, Everybody Arise. It's uh, written by Steve, it's uh, composed by Steve Wallace. The lyrics are written by me. Um, the music is by my friend, Steve Wallace. It's on my album, The Dirty South Chronicles, released in 2021, I believe. Mm -hmm. I say peace to every single being who can feel me. Please let the flaws of man recede freely. I don't take any, leave these jewels and I'm Betty. <sighs> Bouncing, anti-war announcements and I'm jetty. Get out of here. I'm for all the people I'm allowed to be I'm in. Can't nobody take this person out of me. You in. You about to hear what we about to see. A future for all our future generations. Harmonies. Guardians don't need guarding. No more greed. No more misogyny. My God, this modern world is an assault on our arteries. Guy has been downgraded and gone as per our fantasy. Imagine walking and running for hundreds of miles and still you can't be free. Fill the streets, fill the squares, make this heaven on earth. Local grown, global home for the better or worse. Farmers markets, earth domes, make it pop with the perps. This is real, face and mass extinction, what could be worse? Put science first for the earth, the only one that we got. Then go to synagogue, church or mosque and pray a whole lot. My beliefs based in the fact that real faith takes works. Man, the climate change is real. Let's take care of the earth. Cause mother earth is on the rise, you know. She's been abusing, getting tired. It's all on us to make it right. And so everybody arise, everybody arise. My man, Steve Wallace is also a, a singer, opera singer and R&B singer. So he sings the chorus that I just totally messed up for y'all. But <laughs> <laughs> it sounded good to me. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Do uh do you guys think that 
that the reality of of climate collapse and the need to move money from warfare to earth care it, 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 does these sort of questions impact young people when they're when they mostly been signing up because they don't have a better job option in front of them and telling them how politically evil it is doesn't really give them a job it, it, how much impact is politics having i think personally i think it has a huge impact um i've had students write me letters thanking me <clears throat> excuse me for for helping them make the right decision by not joining um i've often had often had students say that if i hadn't if they hadn't met me in the class or if i hadn't come and join their class then they were going to enlist and having not enlisted, they see the connections now. It only takes a few months, usually, for the once once you plant those seeds in their head, for them to see all the possibilities that are out there. I, I often tell the children, you're going to join the military for a job, and you might not be infantry, but whatever job you have supports the infantry. And so any job you have in the military is supporting somebody who's pulling a trigger at the end of the day. So you're supporting death. And if you, if you have no problem with supporting death and genocide, because that's why the military was started, the, the US Army, the Department of the Army was started to keep, to get natives off of their land. And so once you make those connections for, this, for the young people, and you connect the, the racism that a lot of these young black and brown children have been growing up with, with the militarized police and the, and the way that the US military polices people in other countries, then the, the young people see the connections. And um, nobody wants to identify as the oppressor. So this is, uh, this is the approach I use. And um, I th think it is, I think it's been fairly effective. I yep. really appreciate that approach. We do have um, two women that are part of the team of veterans that speak, but I think all the men as well really bring out that the values the US military is inculcating into people are entirely the wrong values. Um, example, sexual abuse. Example, now women active duty based in the U.S. run a 40% chance of being based in a place where they cannot get reproductive health care, where they could risk death just from not being able to receive miscarriage care or an abortion. And the answer what is the answer of the Pentagon? Well, we will pay for you to go to a place where you can get it. And guess what? We won't deduct those days from your vacation. Let that sink in. The U.S. is placing people in the U.S. where their lives are in danger because they are women. The U.S military is rife with white supremacists right now. And the latest report I read from USA Today is that all, all these promises Lloyd Austin made after January 6th, nothing has come of it. They are not changing their recruiting strategies to keep out white supremacists. They are not doing anything active to stop fascist white supremacists organizing within the military. And I think we all know that disproportionately these fascist actors shooting people up have military connections, have been active duty military. So this is a huge problem the military is facing and they are facing it by essentially talking some stuff and ignoring it. And all of these things feed into the situation people could be recruited into. And I think it's, real important that Miles and, and the other uh, speakers are able to talk about what you will actually face if you get sucked into this monster. 
of you the U.S. Also, military. By joining up, you also increase your chance of being sexually assaulted, right? Exactly so. But the Pentagon says, hey, we have a new office, a special prosecutor. We're training our officers to pay more attention. You know, this is all BS. Meanwhile, the numbers of women going in are higher, especially women of color. Um, and it's another problem the military has. Here, there's a Supreme Court decision around affirmative action. And what's the one group the fascists on the Supreme Court decide to leave out when they say no more affirmative action? It's the US military because yeah. they know the volatile situation of an increasing number of troops of color and very few black and brown officers is going to be a problem for them in actually fighting a war. It's all hypocrisy and it's outrageous. The most disturbing thing to me uh, in recent weeks, uh, I'm seeing more open advocacy for a draft in major corporate newspapers in the United States. I mean, this is their solution if recruitment really fails, is a draft. And I'd say one out of two peace activists will hear that and cheer. Oh, thank goodness we want a draft because a draft will create a peace movement. And to my mind, the history doesn't bear that out. And the example they're all thinking of Vietnam, well, it took a massive escalation and several million dead bodies before uh, the war was ended in part by opposition to the draft. So I'm not on board with that as a positive step. Are you guys? No, no way. No, no, because no it's way. just going to catch the people that can't buy their way out, just like yeah. it did during the Civil War. Well, the fantasy is always that this time the draft will apply to billionaires' kids as the same as, as poor kids. I don't know why it would, but this is what they are thinking. It would also just be the sleeping, like the draft would catch so many people who are unaware right now. There are so many, like we in the, in the peace movement, and I say we loosely because I thank y'all for your, for your love and support, you know? Um, it's uh, people who are aware of what's happening think everybody's aware, but we're but we're sadly mistaken. Um, I'd say most of my family is unaware. You know, my immediate family knows, of course, but outside of like like my aunts and uncle, my aunts and uncles, and they're not concerned with the peace movement at all. You know, I love them. They're beautiful people. But I'd say most of our country is not concerned and and even aware that there's um, this looming threat uh, created by by this over bloated budget for the military. Um, so the draft would would just catch poor people and. And it would go on for some time before anybody said anything. Um, you know, I was listening to this incredible talk last night about the invisible walls that that liberals have put up, and and this is one of them: the belief that uh, that a draft would incite some sort of national movement is not the case. There is rampant poverty right next door to to million dollar homes and there's no there's no movement for for equality there's no movement for you know what i'm saying justice for the homeless or anything like that so i don't think it would do anything to help people yeah and we're and we're very close to the great layoff so you know with ai taking over a good percentage of jobs in the next few years um, the draft would just be like the Hunger Games or something. It would just be like, you know, this is a way to to cull off the the poor. We we have I about we three have... minutes left. Um, I, speaking of liberals, I wonder if I could just ask really quick some of the the supposedly best members of the U.S. government, such as AOC, uh, have gotten in some trouble with their constituents for promoting 
recruitment uh, as if it's so normal and it's absolutely inevitable, unavoidable, unquestionable. You simply must promote recruitment, right? And, and with a ridiculous amount of wokeism in it, that somehow it's good if you go up to the Bronx and you recruit black and brown people to serve the oppressor in the US military. That was the worst and most offensive thing that, that AOC did, all in the name of justice or equality or something. Yeah, that's sad. That's, that is the, the power of lobbying money. In my opinion, that's the power of, you know, that's the power of the poison, the, the system that we're in. I really feel that the most important thing any of us can do living in this country and accepting the responsibility that we're in the center of imperialism is to really challenge people living here, whether they're citizens or not, whoever. Being American doesn't mean you're better than the rest of the world. American lives are not more important than other people's lives. Right. We have a responsibility to people of the world. Seems like a secret weapon for the peace movement here, because if we convince people that the military is an evil, racist, imperial force, the military is not going to challenge that and speak against it and argue the contrary, because they don't, they don't want to confront that belief at all, do they? Nope. I, you know, they have a lot of answers, but none of them are true. The What we have going for us is that we do understand the reality. And as Miles was saying, we have the history of um, centuries behind us in understanding how this country has used military force here and around the world to hold on and dominate the rest of the world. It's just true. Now, some people are behind that, and clearly the leaders of the U.S. military are, including their, their Black defense secretary and the, the guy that they're trying to get in as the new Joint Chiefs of Staff, you yeah. know, who says, you know, our main enemy is China, and we're going 100% after stopping China. What, with nukes? Yeah, we've got uh, okay. less than a minute left. Is there a website? How can people learn more? How can they support? How can they get involved? Worldcan'twait.net. Sounds. Also, yeah. And we are not your soldiers.org. You can find us on all the social media platforms and follow Miles Megasife. Follow me on my YouTube channel at. M-I-L-E-S-M-E-G-A-C-I-P-H. That's at Miles Megasife. And my website is www.megasife.com. Everywhere you look, it's Megasife. Rhymes with life. And, and we'd love to hear from veterans who want to join in this project. We raise money to give a small stipend, but it's otherwise it's all volunteer. And, and the youth really need you. So follow Miles Megasife and Deborah Sweet in every sense of the word. Go do the sort of things they are doing. Uh, Deborah and Miles, thank you very, very much for coming on Talk World Radio. Thank, thank you, David. This is Talk World Radio. I'm David Swanson. Take action at rootsaction.org. Help end war at worldbeyondwar.org. Read or listen to today's Peace Almanac entry at peacealmanac.org. All past shows can be heard at talkworldradio.org. Talk World Radio is produced in Charlottesville, Virginia, and syndicated by Pacifica Network. There is no way to peace. Peace is the way.